So, welcome back. Yes, this series does continue on. Not in the same light I wished it to, and it might stop at one point again, but we are here, back yet again, almost eight months later since the release of the second episode. If you haven't noticed, I'm going to be taking a whole new approach to this series. I recently released a Twitter post and community post here on this channel talking about how I have been in secret kind of working on an account in the background, and that is the account you'll be seeing today. Secretly, I did not want to leave any goals for this series unfinished, and if you watched the previous two episodes, you know exactly what those are. But there is going to be a huge huge difference in the continuation of this series and this new account, where I can allow this account to thrive and survive, all while still possibly taking on Jad for the final challenge. And when I say survive, I don't mean as a hardcore Iron Man, the status itself really doesn't mean much to me, it's just the challenge of being an Iron Man that makes my goals on this account so much more difficult but yet enjoyable for myself. So when I say I want to see this account survive through the series, you probably already know what I'm talking about, so we'll leave it at that. Before releasing the community post even, and this video of course, I asked myself multiple times over, is it worth showcasing what I've really been enjoying doing in my free time over the last few months? And I've determined yes. I want to share with all of you what's renewed my passion for the game over the last few months, and as well brought me back to the game. And I also just want to, you know, showcase this now because I don't have the time to pre-record three years worth of content and then release it, you know, in 2025. I want to get started showcasing once again the passion for this account and what drives my passion for this game. So that's what I'll be showing you all today on a very account progression based level. Do I sound too serious and over exaggerated while talking to you about this stupid RuneScape mumbo jumbo bullshit? Well that's why I'm going to talk serious to you about something serious for once. With men's health and hygiene in mind, today's sponsor is once again Manscaped. They've always partnered with me and my content, and now they're partnering with the Testicular Cancer Society to help you take care down there. So if you're down there often like myself using Manscaped products, the Testicular Cancer Society wants to remind you to go check yourself for testicular cancer with easy once a month routine at home self health checks. This year, Manscaped is donating $50,000 to their longtime partner, the Testicular Cancer Society, to help those impacted by testicular cancer. Now, because it is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, Manscaped sent me a special purple accented lawnmower 4.0, one of my favorite products from Manscaped. It's a waterproof and cordless trimmer which helps save me time in the shower, and it's also built with skin safe technology that has these ceramic precision engineered blades which helps reduce the chance of getting nicked or cut in the areas you definitely want maintained. So get yourself the lawnmower 4.0 by going to Manscaped and check out manscaped.com TCS to learn more about how you can perform simple routine self checks at home to prevent testicular cancer. As always you can use my promo code RENDY for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. So it has been a while, it's been months, almost a year since episode number two, so for a very quick recap, I just want to go over what my account had progressed through and done. Well, I got up to about 75 defense, not only had I had more Tanya unlocked, but in episode two, I more heinously found a way to unlock Fury, Region, Hosta, and much more with only one strength and one magic. And the only way coincidentally I could do this is by repeating a quest and getting a lot of free unnecessary XP. Which I think was a huge downfall to the account and that's why eventually I believe it truly got banned. There were some more reasons they said it got banned for, but I'm not going to go into the drama for the hundredth time. You can check that out on the video, I love RuneScape. I'll link in the description below. Anyways, why I was so obsessed with the Fury region and Hosta was because I needed a lot of accuracy and I needed plus 43 strength bonus or more on a defense pure Iron Man, which is very hard to come by in order to hit twos instead of ones with a poison based weapon, which would make my time in fight caves extremely easier because the more chance of hitting a two and a one and a zero rather than a one and a zero, the more accuracy you're going to have on many of these high level NPCs and I'm not going to have to log out repeat waves over and over again once I finally do get to that fight caves. But even if I had a Furia region of Hosta, there were still many steps the account had to take before I could even get close to the fight cave challenge, and I'm talking about years of progression, and that's what's going to be included in this series. It might take me several years to actually get to the end goal of fight caves itself, especially now that this is the kicker. I'm not going to have that Fury region, or worst of all, Hosta on my side. So if this account is to survive, it's going to take many years, and many years of progress and goals, and I'm going to have to find a new way to hit that plus 43 strength bonus, with likely a Bone Dagger P++. Luckily, I think I might have thought of a way, but it's going to require some crazy feats, and even more so, time. But episode 2 recap, therefore, doesn't really matter, because 
Let's just act like that never happened. Instead, we're going to be reversing it back to episode 1. Now, I decided I did want to actually enter Mortania yet again, because that was the whole reason I started this series, to make something as unique as possible. After this, I actually logged out of this account for months. Me and Mahler had realized something. We did not even want to start this series unless we had access to a large portion of the map. That being a place where a defense peer, much less one prayer account as an Iron Man had ever been before. Mauritania. So yeah, I did not even want to begin this series if I could not get into Mauritania. That was the whole purpose beyond the series at the start was, I want to be able to do some barrows, I want to be able to do some cool unique things that other defense peer Iron Man can't do. I want to give my viewers a unique viewing experience. So after I came back from my 4-5 to five month hiatus of not even touching RuneScape, I started again once in late November or early December on a slightly newer account with the same goal in mind. The Defense Pier One Prayer Fight Cave, but of course, with an added benefit of Mauritania. And that's simply what I did. I found a brand new way into Mauritania without repeating any crazy quest XP, doing any crazy hocus pocus shit, and well, there was a little bit of it, but I won't go into details. I did have an account get back into Mauritania with a totally different method. Months later, I then came back to the account like I said, and my first goal was 85 crafting, and I was getting that just in case there was ever a possibility of getting a Fury along the way. But that chance never came to be, and I'll be honest with you, I don't even see that being possible again in the entire existence of this new account, or even in the future of three years span between now and the actual Jad fight. So although my backup plan was in place, the main goal was an alternative plan to 43 strength bonus, and I'll get into how I'm doing that exactly later, but here's where the progression started, and I decided to start recording. At first, I wanted this to be personal, but I like to share my achievements and what I've done with everyone who's watching and who knows me. So here you go. Here's where I started off my new journey on my new defense pier with more Tanya access, yes, but some pretty shitty stats, and a fresh new beginning. Well, I mean, kind of. Actually, I'm missing a lot of clips because I didn't even expect myself to record most of this journey. This was all for fun and for my personal gains until I realized, why not share it with everyone? So, here we are, and the first thing I did on this account was pretty much AFK kick monks all the way to around 70 defense. And there are some other clips missing. Like, I believe I have bronze loves already. I already have, like, 40 mining, 40 smithing. Um... Some quests done, not many, but let's get on with the actual journey after all of this missed content. Woo, dig site content. I am doing dig site quest right now. Yes, dig site quest. The plan is I want 30 herb lore for uh, basically lamping with achievement diaries to lamp the herb lore further and then maybe even one small favor lamps. All of that good stuff because herb lore is very hard to train on an Iron Man. And if I ever want uh, the weapon poison plus plus, I really don't want to have to go out in the wilderness and kill Chaos Ellie with very slow methods. I'd rather just get the Herb Lore because honestly, by the time this account will even be ready to face Jad in the fight caves, I should have the Herb Lore just from doing miscellaneous tasks. So I might as well get a head start on that Herb Lore through the Dig Site quest and possibly through another quest right after this being Shades of Morton. Alright, if you've watched episode 2, you know exactly what this moment stands for, but this time we're doing it legit. We're putting our past of bug abuse behind us, we're becoming absolute normies, but we're going to be becoming a, a cool defense spear still nonetheless. So yes, in this episode you're not going to be seeing me force teleporting back to the dig site by exploding a rock. Instead you're going to be seeing me exploding a rock to pick up a stone tablet the way the quest was intended and me completing the quest. Alright, so like I was mentioning, we're handing in the stone tablet, we're getting the Herblore XP, hopefully it'll boost us closer to 30, and yeah, um, we actually completed Dig Site Quest, not just partially this time. So I was going to do Shades of Morton, but uh, I got called on by BA Services, that's right, I'm leeching my torso and fighter hat I need for this defense pier, because honestly, fuck Barbarian Assault, I do not enjoy playing this minigame whatsoever, and I decided to just pay for some good old BA service pals to bring me all the way through this. So here we go, all the points for both torso and fighter hat. That's gonna be our best in slot <laughs> torso and our best in slot uh, helmet for a very long time. Actually, I think indefinitely for many things. So I'm very happy with this purchase and I'm very happy with the fact that I did not have to actually play this mini game. No offense to those of you who love Barbarian Assault, but 
I can't fucking stand this shit. So the second quest I'm fully recording on this account is Prince Alley Rescue, and that's because it gives me access to Sorcerer's Garden, and Sorcerer's Garden gives me access to some clean herbs that I can use and get my herbler up. As you can see, I've collected a lot of herbs from inside of Sorcerer's Garden after Prince Alley Rescue, and we're making some of these and getting some nice herblor XP. It probably won't get me that much, but like I said, I just need this as a starting base, and the Shades of Morton quest next will give me even another boost to herblor. As you can see in the plugin helper up there, I need to kill five lore shades and pick up their remains and this isn't going to be as easy as last time I don't have a massive boost but I can get a slight boost here but I hopped over to LMS and I'm gonna sip a super combat and hop worlds and I'm gonna continue to hop every 10 seconds to retain the 17 over 1 boost like you've seen in many of my videos before I think this is just a commonly accepted manip and you know I've seen hundreds of people do this I've done it myself over the course of like three years of videos using this LMS boost. I think it's just accepted because you can only do it like three times a day before you get booted out of competitive lobby anyways for surrendering so damn much. All right, so I'm logging back in to kill shades finally. I lost a little bit of the LMS boost here. I'm 16 over one instead of 17 over one. That's just because of the swamp effect, the gas attacking me, the snails attacking me, these diseased men attacking me all along the way back here. I couldn't log out quite every 10 seconds. So yeah, I did lose some of that, but we're making a lot of headway, actually. I didn't know if this would even work. I thought I might need recoils first to do this quest, but it looks like I'm killing this extremely fast. I've got it down like a quarter HP in a matter of seconds. So this is very helpful, although I probably will have to return to Last Man Standing and get another boost before I can kill five of these things, because obviously the longer I'm here, the more this boost is going to clock down, and eventually if I hit three over one, I'm not going to be able to kill a shade with that low of stats. So that's why the boost is kind of necessary here, as there are five in total of these that I do have to kill. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna be able to kill this first one with a 14 over one boost. That's not too bad, it means I lost two minutes of time on that thing and let's see how many of these I can just kill before I have to return to LMS or who knows maybe we'll get hella lucky and not even have to return and make my way all the way back 10 seconds at a time. All right we're coming up on our third shade kill here and I'm barely killing this one I think I'm at six over one and if I drop down even a little bit more, I'm not going to be able to, okay, I can still hit two, so I did kill that thing. But yeah, luckily that's three shades and one LMS go, but I'm going to have to go back to LMS now, I'll probably get another boost, because there's no way in hell I'm killing another one of these things with only six over one stats. All right, I have returned to kill some more innocent green guys here. Fortunately, this should be very easy because we only have to kill two, not three this time, and we'll be finished with probably the hardest portion of this quest, other than me sacrificing some prayer XP which is going to make me cringe inside because there is a part of this quest down the line that I do have to get 25 prayer XP for but it's worth it not only do I need the herblor XP but the mini game teleport I can use the shades of Morton is quick canifus access quick Mortania swamp access it's going to be super handy for me even further down the line whenever I go do barrows, so I'm not too concerned. All right, for two LMS trips, this is cutting in a lot closer than I thought. I'm at four out of over one strength, and that's because these shades have a chance of lowering your strength, uh, and I totally forgot about that. That and I've just had a lot worse RNG this time around, but there it is. I did kill two of these. We killed all five shades way different than the first trip I had, but now we can move on with the quest. All right, like I said earlier, I stand corrected. This is the worst part of the quest. I'm just gonna get it over with 25 prayer XP. <laughs> I do not like doing this, but we're lighting this as fast as possible so I don't have to think about it again. It's just XP, we're still one prayer. We were not completely failed, kind of. But uh, yeah, we got the key, we can complete the quest. And now, more importantly, we have the minigame teleport on our side. All right, here we are completing what should be an otherwise impossible quest. And we're gaining a bit of herbal XP and that teleport, brilliant. So what I forgot to mention is from actually doing Shades of Morton, I can make these Serum 207s, which are huge because I had all these Taroman unfinished potions and I couldn't do anything with them. Literally the supplies to make anything otherwise is pretty ridiculous, so. I decided to just pick up ashes at the GE and get this amazing Herblor XP. And yeah, there's lots of ashes at the GE. You can pick up other people's ashes at the GE. 
This needs to be fixed right away, Jagex, because I'm an Iron Man. I should not be able to pick up the ashes of another man's fire. This is not single player mode at all, but it sure does benefit me right now. With all these spare herbs in my bank, the last thing I have to make is Guam unfinished into attack potions. And I think I'm gonna actually be able to hit 30 herb lore barely here. It looks like it will be possible. I didn't even calc this out, but I literally have like almost just enough supplies to hit 30 and a little bit extra, which is surprising because I thought I would be short. There we go, 30 herb lore. Now we can take on achievement diaries later and much more and get more XP from lamps in general. Can you believe it? It's Rindy, yes, Rindy, and we're hunting butterflies right now. We're getting hunter up at a very low level and I'm actually enjoying it. This is very relaxing catching some butterflies and releasing them back into the wild here. I think it's only though because I'm at a very low level of hunter. I don't know what's gotten into me, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying skilling right now. Either way though, why I'm doing this, why am I getting hunter up? Well, I need at least 50 hunter for eclectics and jars. More uh, hopefully I'm getting 60 hunter so I can bare hand them wherever I see them. But yeah, the plan is to get eclectic level because I do want to get as many medium clues as possible and eclectics fortunately are something I can do as a defense spear and are something that's extremely quick to get for medium clues as they're only a 1 in 25 chance to pull a medium clue out of them. So that's going to be super handy considering I might need 10,000 medium clues completed at some point on this account. Yeah, that's not an exaggeration, 10,000. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go for 10,000 mediums or a little bit more easies, but the whole plan is to get purple sweets for the one per fire cape. And even though I can't do like half the steps in medium clues, they give more purple sweets per roll and they have more rolls, I believe. Not 100% sure about that one, but uh, we'll have to test it. They're a little bit quicker to get than easy clues as well, I believe, from eclectics than thieving hand members for easies. I'll do a test probably long ways in the future for which is actually quicker for purple sweets. But the main, more midterm goal is going to be spiked manacles. On average, that's a 1 in like 1,200 drop, but you get a few rolls per clue, and I think that means it's going to take an average of 300 medium clues completed on this account, which is going to take probably well over 100 hours as well, just on its own as a kind of medium far tier away reward. And once again, that's only because I can do like half of the medium clue steps. So it's going to take a lot of time. That and my navigation on this account is terrible. I can't even use like magic spell teleports because my magic level is one. And yeah, so our goal is eclectic implings for now. Um, and as well, we're going to get a strength ammy trimmed on our way to the spiked manacles. I believe this is the easiest way to acquire a strength ammy, and that's going to be our best in slot necklace. So we're going to get a best in slot boot, best in slot necklace, and possibly a bunch of purple sweets from these medium clues and they're just a huge benefit to the account and I'm gonna be stuck doing them probably for a very long time once I get the actual hunter up for that clue. All right, I did just get 27 hunter, which is the requirement for Eagle's Peak and Eagle's Peak does give some hunter XP and it'll boost me up to 29, I believe, which is required for swamp lizards, which are the best XP at that level. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that quest. I'm, I've been enjoying questing and skilling lately, so I might as well get some more quest points along the way. And of course, some fashion scape being that Eagle Cape. Already another ironic moment of poetic justice here. I'm going into the cutscene towards the end of Eagle's Peak, and uh, if you watched my level 3 Inferno Cape video, I believe, this had some uses as well, and it probably still does. It's very buggy, but by going through this, I'm never going to have access to this again, so once again, I'm kind of uh, somehow stopping myself from future activity of bug abuse on this account by simply completing this quest normally, just like the dig site. All right, here we go. Turning the ferret in. Eagle's Peak completed. That should give us 29 hunter. Yep. And now we can catch swamp lizards in Mortania. Yes, I have Mortania access so I can actually catch swamp lizards. What an amazing perk because I'm going to stay at swamp lizards forever, right? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not going to be doing this forever. I'm not settled. Uh, luckily, we are not restricted to Mortania, but we do have access to it. So this is actually quite fun still, and much better XP per hour than the butterflies were, obviously. But I'm still having fun skilling. I know we're still in the early levels. I'm probably not bored to death yet, but I'm enjoying this, and this is a perk of Mortania, having to catch these things. But only a small one. I think once I'm 4300, I'm going to switch to Falconry for a bit, and then after that, switch to Desert Lizards, as those are optimal XP methods for Hunter. 
But yeah, we're slowly working our way up to the 50 and 60 goals of Hunter that I had earlier. Okay, so just wanted to do a quick summary. These are my stats now. Um, like I said earlier, I have 85 crafting I got first um, in case of any future attempts at a Fury enchant, which is likely never going to happen as well. We've got 43 Hunter now, so we can do Falconry whenever we go back to that. I'm taking a break from Hunter right the second though to do some LMS because I need GP badly. I'm going to get Ruin Arrows and sell those to a very specific shop for coin as well. I need some Wilderness Crab Teleports and I'll get into why I need those later. So yeah, we're going to take our favorite approach here to LMS, running and hiding and getting one kill. To get as many points as possible and hopefully make it to the top two contestants every round for four maximum total points okay i want you all to know i don't just hide i do have to get the first kill so i'm not complete dog shit at this game but i'm bad enough to where i don't want to go for another kill after the first one i'm doing some some fakies watch this Ooh, wow he wasn't expecting that uh holy fuck okay this is i can i don't know how people talk while they do this shit <clears throat> oh 43 oh yeah baby Let's spec him on range. Yes. No. Okay. I've got to get some kills and hide. But yeah, that's my main strategy. And I suggest it to anyone who's as bad at this as I am. Alright, so you might be asking, why am I here? Well, we're here to buy Ruin Arrows for some GP. As well as get some Wilderness Crab Teleport Tablets. But I'm going to do that a little bit later. I spent... 20 so-ish points on these ruin arrows 2100 of them and i'll be buying about 50 wilderness tablets later on for something of an adventure but uh yeah these ruin arrows are actually worth more than what you're going to see right here they're not 84k they're much more than that if you sell them to the right shop and you sell them at stock value okay here we are at my favorite store the shazin range store why i like this store is because it's shared between both ironman and normal accounts alike so right now I'm buying five arrows as soon as I sell them on my alt account with some GP it has and I'm getting maximized uh, coins out of each of these arrows selling them for 220 GP each. So we're getting tons of coin just from these 2100 arrows that I got earlier for around 22 points. And as you can see, I've already stacked up 140k, and we haven't even sold half of these things yet. Alright, so I'm selling up the last of the Ruin Arrows finally. This actually takes a long time, selling these five each, um, and then buying them off the other account. But we're at 460k cash, the first actual cash stack I've had on this account that's not just from random ass shit selling, you know, like crafting supplies to a shop that's just giving me 10k at a time. So I'm really happy about that. But I'm pretty sure I might have to go back to last man standing because what I haven't told you yet is the reason for needing this cash and that's going to be to buy a hell of a lot of sapphires. Yes, I do have a little bit of a sneaky plan in place. You might have wondered why I needed those wilderness crab teleports and why I need so much GP. And that's because I'm trying to buy some gold ore and some sapphires to make you guessed it, sapphire rings. But not just any kind of sapphire ring. A ring of recoil because I am actually going to need this to kill Jad. There's no way in hell I'm repoisoning Jad like seven or eight times with one stat. Uh, it'll just regen too quickly. I, I looked up the odds of it and it is like a 0.001% chance I'll even get a kill on Jad and repoison it that many times in a row. So we're really going to actually need recoils. And now we don't have the LMS boost from last episode, we don't have the very handy recoil method. So I'm going to have to think of something else because I'm one magic and recoils require seven magic to enchant. Also, you know, they give magic XP every time you enchant them. And I probably need around eight of these recoils to take on Jad. But also, I think I'm going to need a lot more than eight recoils in total because I have some very hardcore plans for this account. And a lot of the PVM I have planned for this account in the future is going to require recoils. So I might even have to go back to LMS and get some more points, some more coins to buy gems because uncut gems are cheaper than cut gems and you can find cut gems much easier than just going to the Alcarid store. All right, so I got around a thousand gold ore for a thousand rings. Um, so now we're moving on to sapphires. I'm buying them from anywhere and everywhere I can because I'm going to need a thousand of these things. I'm buying them cut and uncut and that's where a lot of my money is gonna be going to. And this Keldogram store actually sells them for higher than average in any of the other stores, but it sells more stock, so it takes a little bit less time to get them. And it takes forever for these stocks to actually go back up. So I'm just taking the sapphires wherever I can get them now. 
literally going everywhere and anywhere. Now we're at the Gem Trader in Alcarid, who does have cheaper uncuts if I can ever find them, but they're usually sold out. So this is looking pretty uh, bad. I might not have enough money for all the sapphires I need, and I might have to go run and hide some more inside dirty, stinky LMS. I predicted the future. We got back to LMS. I just died again, but I think I have enough points for the last of the GP I'll need for a while. I'm going to spend 10 of my points here to get some more Ruin Arrows and Ruin Arrows and uh, then I'm going to, yeah, cash out some more gems. I doubt anyone else is trying to buy this many Sapphires, but yeah, this guy's stocked up with two at a time in some of these worlds. And lastly, once again, I said we're going to hit every gem shop possible. Here's another one in Karen that I didn't even know existed until I wikied it. And yeah, we're getting gems pretty quick here. The bank's just around the corner up the stairs and we're buying out every shop. That's what we're doing. Just got a genie lamp. I'm going to be using this on Herblore like I discussed earlier. In case anyone asks for the future, I'm going to be using all of my books of knowledge, genie lamps, all of that good stuff on Herblore because I feel like by the end of this entire series, I will have enough Herblore to make that weapon poison plus plus, and I won't even have to bother with the chaos heli. And lastly, as you can see, we are getting gold bars. We're smithing them at this furnace here. I'm going to get about 900 to 1000 of these. And then I can finally make my Sapphire Unenchanted Rings. All right, I actually had 1,100 of these uh, ready to go, not 900 to 1,000, but also I'm gonna make some necklaces. I even have some extra Sapphires and gold bars. I do want some games necklaces so I can actually transport around the map easier, especially while I'm doing medium clues because I found out probably gonna be doing about 10,000 of those in the lifetime of this account. But yeah, I need some transportation for sure. Now I didn't also record a lot of the progression on this account, so I did forget to mention, yes, I already have an arty cloak and some other miscellaneous things like these beautiful rainbow boots. I think I already have Shadow of the Storm done on this, so I have like bronze gloves. I have a Karambon pasted bronze spear, not iron, because I didn't want to take the time to get an iron spear yet from Hobgoblins. And eventually I was going to finish Twibo and a Trio quest anyways for the medium clue step of Jabuti. Or is it Gabuti? I don't fucking know. So yeah, anyways, I'm going to get my fishing up more than it is now and hopefully do that and get an iron KP spear probably somewhere down the road. But right now we're stuck to bronze. Before I go into the extremely long, tedious process of me enchanting those recoils, it's going to take like upwards of 16 hours. I've decided to go ahead and level some more Hunter. As you saw earlier, I think I had like 43. Now I'm getting close to uh, 50, doing some falconry here. And eventually I'm going to switch over to desert lizards, do some other things on the side. Just take a break from the idea of making rings and do some nice uh, relaxing skilling, you could say, because I am going to need to catch Eclectic Empling soon for those uh, 10,000 medium clues I just mentioned earlier. All right, I got even more hunters, so now we're hunting these desert lizards out here in the godforsaken barren desert land, but it is better XP per hour, and we're making headway to the 60 hunter goal I was talking about earlier still. Okay, I, I got bored of hunter, I didn't quite hit 60, but I'm setting up my inventory now for basically the real first run of recoils I'm going to be doing. Like I said, I need these recoils, and this is gonna take me like, 10 to 20 hours of time enchanting this many recoils and this might not even be enough I might have to get more later uh, because I don't know when and if this uh, method is ever going to be changed altered any of that basically what I'm doing is I'm using this book of dwarven lore from inside of the between a rock quest I believe it's partially completed you've seen me use this in other videos but this time I'm using it for the recoils and I'm basically going to be combining the only 7 over 1 boost with the Fountain of Ruin. Ruin! Fountain of Ruin! Uh, as you know, the Fountain of Ruin gives no XP and magic, and an overload inside of Raids 1 gives you exactly 7 over 1 magic, so I can barely hit that Sapphire enchant spell. I'm able to basically enchant as many recoils as I want, and this has been done publicly on other videos. There's other people that have this done. There's many Iron Men in the community of skilling that actually have this done. But yeah, we're just combining the Fountain of Rune and Raids 1. And we're going to have a lot of recoils to do some cool PVM feats on this account eventually. And of course, it is actually completely necessary for the Jad portion of this series when we get there in three fucking years. So why I'm telling you all this is going to take a lot of time is because... 
I'm going to have to be getting the overload potions for my boost of 7 over 1 magic from Mutadiles, and I'm going to have to be doing most of the damage on an Iron Man while also having another account present in the room. This is what allows for any other Iron Man like my Defense Pure Iron Man here to go over and pick up the actual overload drop from this Mutadial even though it didn't kill it inside of this raid. So the only Iron Man alt I have and why this is taking so specifically long for myself is because I'm using a very shit to your Iron Man. So I'm using a second alt to do maybe 40% of the damage but I have to make sure I do the majority of the damage on the Iron Man here and that's why I said before this is going to take a lot of time because as you can see I'm hitting absolute dog shit on this mute dial. Every now and then I get a nice 20 slap off with the DSIM, but yeah, I wish I had a much better account for this, unfortunately I don't. Eventually though, after about five to 10 minutes, this thing will drop and uh, yeah, I'll be able to pick the overload up on the defense pier, head over to the Fountain of Ruin, and I said Ruin, right? Wow. And then, um, or did I? Sorry, I'm getting distracted and then enchant those recoils with the 7 over 1 boost. So I've got even a fourth alt here to kind of scout the wilderness because every time I'm doing an inventory of recoils to the wilderness crab spot and then running to this fountain of ruin here, there is the potential of PKers killing my account. So this is also not only taking me a very long time to pull off for many recoils, but it's very risky because I'm having to enter the wilderness every single time to enchant these recoils to make sure I don't get any magic XP. On these runs, I've decided it's a lot safer once I've actually made the recoils to do this and hop over to this F2P world here because there's no one PKing in F2P world. Sometimes there's like literally 50 people in a world. And from there, I also make my way south past the green dragons that would normally be in an F2P or P2P world, I mean, and then they won't be there in that F2P world. I get to avoid, uh, what is it, Venonatus as well by walking south in the F2P world. So this is just an optimal improvement to the method and from there i basically go to under 20 wilderness already cloak and then take a very long route all the way back to zaya unfortunately and then to the land's end portion of zaya all the way north then west to the mountain guide and finally i get back over to raids one and that is another reason why this method takes so long because the route as i'll probably showcase next is an extremely long one just to get back and redo the raid as well i've got to scout the raids every single time on yet a fifth alt and hope that the raids are actually going to be muted dial rooms right off the bat oh fuck is that, that's a magpie i can't even catch that yet all right let's show you how horrendous this uh entire journey is back all the way to raids one for every single inventory of recoils i'm gonna have to get here Okay, so hopefully I sped up the clip a bit for you, but here we're about to hit the mountain guide and that's when we get back to Quadi Morden, Quad Raids 1, whatever it's called. And luckily we have this guy unlocked. This whole time I've also been scouting on a side account new raids, so uh, yeah, that's just part of the process and this is the journey it takes to get one inventory of recoils. Okay, it's been about four hours and we have over 300 recoils completely enchanted here and still a lot more to go. I, I still think I might even make more after this, maybe even another thousand. So yeah, there's a lot more to go for sure, but I'm happy with where we're at now and I can use these recoils for a lot of things because 300 still is quite a bit. I don't know why, but I'm really hangering for some desert lizards out here. So I don't, I I've been enjoying skilling on this account. It's surprising. Speaking of skilling, I've decided to go ahead and get some wood cutting and fletching up of all things. I think I need 10 fletching for tourist traps, so I realized I might as well do that while I'm doing the beginning stages of wood cutting. But the main goal here is I want to get Lost City done. I want to kick the tree spirit to death while I can. You can actually bring a vent RPG inside of Entrana 
even though it increases your attack speed because it is technically like a free-handed weapon and shows like kick on your attack styles maybe i don't know that's why i'm guessing it works but i really want to kick that tree spirit to death and also it'll give me a chance to use some recoils i just made we can see some of the fruit of our hard labor of making recoils earlier by completing lost city we've moved on in our woodcutting progress we're now chopping a fucking oak tree of all things this beautiful oak right next to Draenor Village. I don't know if this is the closest oak to a bank. Someone probably knows this. Comment below if you do. But uh, yeah, soon to be, I think it's a 36 woodcutting requirement for Lost City. And then we'll take on that tree spirit. Okay, I've actually already completed part of the quest. Um, I got the woodcutting requirement earlier. And now I am trying to get that 17 over one boost and log in and out for 10 seconds at a time while going towards Entrana and that tree spirit to maybe help myself kill it without the need of recoils. We'll see. Okay, so we still can bring the event RPG into Entrana, and uh, I'm gonna lose maybe another boost here. That ship took forever, Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'm hopping over, and yeah, I, I'm not bringing recoils this time. I wanted to test out if I can actually kill the tree spirit with just the 16 over one now, not 17 over one. Uh, but I re am realizing that I also have to kill the zombie, so it's just gonna be a kind of experiment here. I highly doubt we'll be able to make it all the way to the tree spirit and out DPS him since our stats are already going down so quickly, but it it's worth a try to save some recoils because the recoils could be used for, yes, more important things. Okay, so I started kicking the zombie at 16 over 1, and I still haven't killed it, and we're already almost at 10 over 1, so I, I think... As I predicted, my hypothesis is correct here. I don't think we're going to be able to take on the tree spirit, even if we somehow get the axe from this singular zombie kill. Yeah, there's no way I can kill a level 100 tree spirit like with this method alone. I'm, I think I'm going to need the recoils. Like, I can't even make this up. Look at this right now. I'm having to eat. I can't even kill the fucking zombie. How am I supposed to kill the tree spirit? Uh, I'm going to have to sacrifice those recoils. This is not... Oh, wait. There we go, he's dead. It only took fucking forever. Oh no, we got the bronze axe as well. That means if we had the recoils, this run would have been perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave and just reset my boost and bring some recoils next time. So here we go, making attempt number two, hopping worlds. This time we've got 17 over one, so we have a little bit extra of a chance. As well though, we've got recoils, the most important factor. All right, finally, we're kicking the zombie. You don't know how excited I am. I've been literally running all the way to Entrana 10 seconds at a time for like 30 minutes just to redo this one attempt. Oh, already, this is like way faster. You can see these recoils are doing fucking work. I know I'm kind of wasting the recoil on the zombie, but I do want a, a fat boost for the tree spirit as well. So look at this, 15 over one boost, 30 seconds till it goes down even more. And he looks about dead if I can just finish him off. There we go. Hopefully this drops the axe though. I don't know. Okay, damn. Lucky twice in a row. The axe is not always a guaranteed drop, I believe. At least that's what I remember. I haven't done this quest in a while, but uh, yeah, let's go over here now and try and take on the tree spirit. This should be, this should be possible. Um, I'm just worried about my food. I am using stews of all things because I... I'm an idiot and that's all I decided to pull out of the bank. I could have like gone and bought some Karambwans, but I'm also like poor as shit right now and I really don't want to run and hide in LMS. Yeah, fast forward a bit. Here we are with one stew left. I knew this was a bad idea, damn it. When I overcome one thing, it's the next thing that I'm worried about. And here, we're almost out of food. This is fucking scary. I am a hardcore, by the way, so this is not good. I guess I'm just going to sit here and attack it for a little bit more and just teleport out when I can. But I'm going to have to go and get Karambwans, unfortunately, and go for a third attempt at a fucking lost city completion of all things. The simplest things on this account are not the simplest things. That's what makes it so entertaining. All right, let's... Oh, God. 10 HP left. That's fucking scary. Let's go get Karambwans. All right, we are lucky that we have enough GP for Karambwans. We have 6.7K left, so not much, but we have enough for an inventory and one more chance at the tree spirit. And as I mentioned earlier, you can only surrender from competitive LMS three times a day. So after this game and after this attempt, we are banned for 24 hours. This first zombie kill, I somehow managed 16 over one boost finish and the bronze ax. Yes, we didn't have to kill a second one here. And now to move on to the tree spirit for a second time. All right, we should have this. If not, we have to wait 
pretty much 24 hours or gather some friends for a casual match, but I think we can do this. The Karam ones should be the deciding factor here, and I have all my recoils. This quest would not be possible without these recoils here, as it seems. So like I said, many things on this account are going to be using recoils, and that's why I'm getting so many of them. And if you didn't even think about this further down the line, I'm gonna need Lost City done because I'm trying to catch as many eclectics as I can, like I mentioned earlier, for around 10,000 medium clues. So, yeah, Piro Piro is a must, and that's inside of Xenaris, which requires Lost City to enter. So, literally, I couldn't even catch these eclectics without these recoils, if you think about it. Finally, this tree spirit is going down. I have about six Karam ones left, so it is cutting it a little close, but we got it killed off with the help of those recoils and that boost. We're still at 11 over one somehow. The recoils are amazing, so I'm gonna cut this tree for as many branches as I can get and go ahead and finish Lost City Quest. As I'm walking back here, I'm realizing I might have said something bullshit earlier. I just remembered there are wheat fields you can enter Piro Piro in without the access to Xenaris, but it just makes it that much easier and we've got a quest done that otherwise should be impossible on this account and that ups our quest points a bit which is always handy plus i get a badass soundtrack unlock from this quest and i get to look at blue all day what's better than that man all right this is gonna sound noob as fuck and i am a noob in many aspects of this game i've told you all this my skilling knowledge is near zero along with many other things so uh this is my first time in piro piro uh, i don't even know who to talk to and yeah i heard you can get free jars though from this place so we're gonna try and do that okay i had a talk with a friend on discord and I, apparently i've been talking to the wrong npc this whole time this is how new i am and so i'm gonna go over here and talk to this gnome apparently and he's gonna give me some free jars and from there i can catch uh, the shittier tier implings and exchange them for more jars as well as catch eclectics i did get well over 50 hunter earlier so i can catch the eclectics right now with net and jar i've also got high enough hunter now even to catch magpies with my net and jar so possibly that will give us a power amulet which is an upgrade because right now we have shit all for amulets on this account and i do need some more accuracy of course and a little bit of strength bonus from that Another thing I forgot to mention is I did disable the actual strength XP through that gnome, so I won't actually be ruining my account every time I push through the wheat field. Normally, pushing through the wheat gives you strength XP, but obviously, since I'm a defense peer, I want to be one strength. So I've tagged the eclectic over there. I, I heard that they spawn always in the same area. I don't know where that is yet until I catch it a couple times with the rune light plug in here. Yeah, I'm also catching these shit tier imps just to get more jars, like my friend told me to do. So... This is my first Piro Piro experience. Uh, hopefully we can get a medium clue pretty soon. And I've already caught two eclectics there. And wow. Okay, I just got a medium clue on my second eclectic. I guess that makes sense because you know, they're a one in 25, so it's not that rare of a drop. But although I'm trying to hold back my excitement right now, I do want to get some more jars. So I'm not going to quite yet do the medium clue. I'm going to fill up my inventory. Hopefully catch a magpie, see what it gives me, and then yeah, finally do the first ever medium clue on this account. I've spotted a magpie. It keeps running away from me. Unfortunately, on these defense piers, I do not have magic, so uh, I'm going to have to just kind of wait around, run after with my terrible agility level here, and hopefully eventually catch it. Um, someone's probably going to snipe it from me. I've seen some like Vinnies here. But yeah, I don't have dark lure, don't have snares, and come on, come on, come on. Almost, yes, we got it first swipe somehow. What? It just gave us a hard clue? That has to be like really rare. And it, no, I thought those were diamonds. Those, it actually gave us amulets of power too. That's exactly what I needed from the first magpie I've ever caught on this account. That's got to be some sign from the great God Almighty or something, the RN Jesus. But yeah, I'm going to... Holy shit. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the inventory out and just catch some eclectics and hold them all. Then go do this medium, maybe even hard clue? I'll have to check out what the hell this hard clue is. I doubt I can do many of those. I can barely even do mediums, if not half of them, so. So luckily, yes, I could do the first step of this medium, which is already another good sign. And uh, I'll have to check if I can do the second step, but I filled my inventory with eclectics. Oh, actually, I think I could do that one. 
Uh, hard leather body, surprisingly, doesn't require range. It only requires 10 defense, and I, I think I can get the other supplies for this clue, so... There's very few equipment clues I can do on the medium clues, but that's one of them. So I'm kicking cows literally for their cow hide to make the hard leather body. Cows are actually immune to poison because of their moo timer, so my KP spear is pretty useless here, but luckily I am destroying this thing. All right, I've got all the necessary gear for this step of the clue now. I bought the blue boots from the gnome stronghold. I made the hard leather body from the cow hide, and I even made the silver sickle with my high crafting level that I luckily had, as well as my decent mining level. So I'm no no lie, I'm literally tunneling through the underground White Wolf Mountain Pass to get to Catherby because I cannot afford a charter ship to Catherby. I've got 388 coins left. You know what that means? I'm probably gonna have to do some terrible last man standing here soon. No, I cannot use a stash unit. I don't even have a house yet. I'm one construction, but let's hope that he gives us a clue we can do. Crandor? Oh, no. I haven't done Dragon Slayer. Well, I, don't, I can't do Dragon Slayer. I can get up to the step to where I get on Crandor, though. But it's past the step of Ned's cutscene. The infamous Ned's cutscene I used in my last episode that had so many uses. Back at LMS, hiding, of course, for the best possible points. Getting some more rune arrows because I literally have 300 GP as you likely saw. The plan is, I think I am going to do Dragon Slayer up until that step. No hesitation in completing the Ned cutscene step. And when I say no hesitation, I mean literally, even after all of these months, there's still some buggy things in that cutscene that can be used for so many future potential bugs. But like I said, I'm trying to take a whole new approach to this game. I'm not trying to do things I know will get me banned. And by completing that portion of Dragon Slayer, I think that's actually going to, you know, allow me to possibly never be tempted by that cutscene again. So I might as well complete past the cutscene, get up to that step so I can actually do the medium clue after I get some coin here from Last Man Standing. Okay, I've got a nice 250k cash stack now. That's probably all going to be used in charter ships, not only for, you know, clues and whatnot, but also when I finish making those recoils because I chartered back the port serum every single time. Okay, so unlike Lost City, this time I'm preparing myself. I've actually got a few inventories banked of Karam ones because Dragon Slayer, there are going to be some boss fights and NPC fights I'm going to actually have to take a lot of damage in. So let's go ahead and start Dragon Slayer 1 and get up to Crandor just for this medium step. Luckily, we already had barely 32 quest points, so I did get to start the Dragon Slayer quest pretty easily here. Got all the necessary supplies, and I almost forgot there's a cool shop up here that gave me ruined plate legs. So they cost a few bit of coin, but I have some extra for once, so I decided why not get my new best in slot legs here. I'm no longer banned from LMS, by the way. You probably saw that earlier. But anyways, I sipped another super combat. We're hopping over, and we're gonna basically make our way to Melzar's Maze and kill a lot of NPCs over there with a boost, 17 over 1, once again. Okay, so you might have seen this in Episode 2, but we're gonna go ahead and use our boost once again here and kill these NPCs twice each this time, though, instead of three times each, because I do have recoils I can use on Melzar. So I'm doing this twice each because I need a key to go through the door, and it consumes the key. And if I get two keys here, I can actually save one key for the second trip I'm going to take from LMS with a secondary boost of 17 over 1 later on. This is the only room here with a ghost that actually you can't poison the NPC with besides Melzar. So that's why I'm kicking now with the RPG because, uh, yeah, these ghosts are immune to poison for some fucking weird reason. Once again, two keys from the ghost, then I'll go upstairs, get two more keys from the skeleton, go downstairs a couple of times, two keys from the zombies, and then finally... Teleport back to Last Man Standing, get another boost, run through the whole thing again with a fresh boost, and kill Melzar as fast as possible. Okay, that is an extra set of keys acquired from every boss up till Melzar, so now I'm going to teleport out and head back to LMS for a secondary boost of the day, and then use all these keys to get back to Melzar as quick as possible. So I've made it back to Melzar with the boost properly uh, upped this time to 16, but this time it's going to be different from episode 2. I'm not going to use the alt to do the slow method of killing Melzar because I do have recoils before I'm actually fighting this boss for once, so I can just sit here and kind of tank him and use my recoils, and as long as I have aggro on the final blow as well, I get the key drop and then I can move on to the next room where I will then use my alt, and you'll see that here in a second hopefully.
Alright, so you've probably already seen this if you've watched episode 2, but I'm using an alt to hit a 1 with an airstrike, a serpentine helm, and a toxic staff in order to get a perfect venom 100% chance on this thing. Then I'm hoping that it regens back to full HP before the venom starts ticking down. That way I actually get the kill credit here on my Iron Man when it's reset at full HP. So I did end up hitting a 1 on this demon before it fell due to the venom damage and that gave me the kill credit and the key. And that was the final step of Dragon Slayer that would be difficult, at least in terms of mechanical skill. The other part would be just forcing myself to go through that cutscene and actually never think about the possibilities of bugs on this account ever again. Uh, so here we are, I'm actually going through the cutscene as it should be intended for once. The last time I did this was probably like 2010, so uh, yeah, there's still so many bugs in this cutscene. I don't know how, it's been in like every fucking video, but there's still so many. I'm just gonna spam through the spacebar and just not think about it because uh, I could do so much with this cutscene still, but it's just not... It's not worth getting banned over. I think I could still click off now and, and go back to the boat and still have access to this cutscene, but once I spam through like this whole dialogue here, yeah, that's when, oh fuck, that's when it's never usable again. So I can never go back in that cutscene, but I, I can get back on Crandor, so we can now do a medium clue step. I think this is the third step, so I can maybe get a loot from this. If not a clue, I can do, hopefully. Uh, of course, it's a clue. Uh, I can do this, okay. Verox score, that's easy. Take the Chronicle out of here and head over there. The first salesman in Verox actually gave me a fifth step to this clue, but this should be the final completion. Um, we are going to get a medium casket off our first medium clue, which is, I'm surprised, honestly. But this is probably the longest clue I've done in my life. Let's see if it was worth it. Highly doubt it. Let's see what's in this casket. Oh, oh, that's not bad. 10 purple sweets. I will honestly take that because there are many more clues to come and the fact that I could complete that and get something I need right there, 10 purple sweets, that's super exciting for me. I know that sounds stupid, but I'm really looking forward to doing more of these clues. The medium clue journey for Defense Saga has just begun, and there is so much more I can get than just, well, 10 purple sweets. As well, there's so many more quests I can do that should be impossible that utilize recoils. I hope you tune in next time to episode 4 of Defense Saga and see what all can be accomplished on this very unique, special Hardcore Iron Man account that's constantly striving for strength bonus as well as the completionist level of Defense Pure Iron Man. If you enjoyed today's episode, a subscription to my channel is greatly appreciated. I'll see you all again in just a couple of weeks.